Good morning, everyone. Um, I uh, recently, or just a few minutes ago, watched my friend Wasky Squirrel's um, review. Not really a review. He unveiled his new uh, machinist toolbox, which he's using to organize his pens. And he, like most people that have pen collections organize them in a very logical way. Parker 51s go, Parkers go here, Schaefer's go there, Waterman's go there. You know, they all belong in their, with their siblings and their family members. I don't do that. And of course, that uh, Mr. Iconoclast me I don't do that. I, I, there are many pens. I have many pens, and they could, they could end up being placed in the logical spot for them, in the way that my brain works, and in the way that I use them. So I'm just going to draw you uh, with a. The most modern, one of the most modern pens I have is this Schaefer desk pen, but I'm hand holding my camera here, so using a desk pen makes sense because I can't unscrew the cap as well as hold this, but because I'm going to be walking around my house in a minute. So, anyway, so here's, let's imagine here's your pen. I'm just going to uncap it. It's hard to draw. I'm also not holding the paper, so I'm trying to draw very lightly so I don't slide the paper around. I mean, here's the clip. It doesn't have to have a clip, but I'm just making it have a clip. And so this pen, let's pretend that's a real pen. It could be in any number of, let me just count my, count the places that it could be. It could be in, you know, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It could be maybe in twelve different places. Um, if it's a desk pen like this, I have desk pens either a few of them are on my desk some are on a couple of other tables in my house. The ones that also have a light attached to it are placed in around my house to provide not only pens at that location, but illumination. So I'm, the desk pens are sort of the odd man out. They're in drawers, um, and they're generally organized by manufacturer. Okay, anyway, so this pen could be in any number of 12 or so places. The ones that I'm using most of the time, and the reason why this one happens to be out on my desk, rather than in a drawer with its siblings or its relatives, is probably because I was really excited about how fine the nib is, and I kind of like fine nibs sometimes. So. <clears throat> at my desk. Here's my drawing desk. Here's where I do my drawing and here's where I do my calligraphy. I have these metal index card drawers, which you can buy cheaply or find on the side of the road. And you'll find them very quickly as our businesses tumble and go into bankruptcy because of this virus thing. Oh, by the way, I'm because I'm not going to go to church on Easter Sunday. I've got my all my sharp razor blades for my suicide thing that I'm going to be doing. What a goddamn moron we have as a president! Anyway, here in these things, these drawers, uh, two, one dozen, there's one dozen drawers here. Each of them hold can hold two. Uh, levels of pens. These are pens that I use for um, drawing or writing. 
and they are arranged by nib style. Um, these are good for drawing. They're just sort of nice rubbery kind of nibs and I can sketch without worrying about breaking the nib by pressing down too hard in my fer fervent dra drawing. These are extra fine. These are desk pens that are fitted with all sorts of different kinds of um, drawing nibs. They're not really arranged by nibs in this case, in that drawer, but in this drawer, or in this drawer up here, they, these are broad pens. These are broad pens as well. They're all different manufacturers. On this side, we've got my, my Franken pens with the uh, uh, 19th century you know, pen nibs that were made in 1880 or so that I fitted in more modern pens and I do calligraphy with these. And these are arranged by snappy or sloppy or tight. I have different classifications of how the nib reacts. And these doors are pens that I'm either, they're either filled with ink and I'm using them to, for whatever reason, reacquainting myself with them sometimes. Sometimes they're pens I'm, I'm going to be fixing and selling to other people. It's, this is sort of what I'm using. My desk is, is arranged like that. While I'm here in this part of the house, let me just show you out of order from what I wanted to do. Somewhere over here I have pens that are in the process of being repaired in these drawers here, in these little cabinets. Um, are pens that are waiting to be sacked. I also have, I thought I had them here, but I may have moved them somewhere. I had uh, zippered cases that are full of pens that I'm selling. And they too are usually arranged, are almost always arranged by um, nib style. This back here is a machinist tool chest with this is an actual, it's like a steamer trunk. It has lots of rivets. It's bigger than a standard machinist box. And I put things in there and then I take them out because I just don't like all of the stuff you have to do, go through to get to them. You have to unlock it. You have to make room for where you're going to put it. And it drives me crazy because I want, when I want a pen, I want it now. Oh, I forgot about this display. Sorry. Here is a display case that once held um, silverware for Bloomingdale's. And I do have a few pens in here. Ripple, Waterman Ripple pens. And I just like the wood grain with the wood tools I have and stuff. So there are occasional areas in my house where I have pens that are placed for decorative reasons. I know, isn't that crazy? Here's one of my desk pens that's attached to a light, which comes in handy when I want to see what I'm doing over there. I don't think I have anything over there, though I might, might be, you know, a single fountain pen that I use. Oh, I have to get my, my crib notes here, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> I have a hell of a lot of pens, and I got a hell of a lot of pens all in one fell swoop when I bought a pen repair company. And I used to have way more pens than I needed because I wanted to um, be able to have a, an actual sample of any pen that that I would be selling. So I would need you know, a sample. Even if I didn't have a yellow dual fold senior uh, 
for sale, I wanted to be able to show someone uh, what a yellow dual-fold senior looked like. It looks like that. That's my Mandarin area. Look at that poor pencil. It broke in half. That Mandarin, by the way, is really has a beautiful nib and it has its $7.50 price sticker still on it or $7, I forget which. This was a case that was used to hold wristwatch bands. And now it holds pens. And these hold, each drawer represents a certain kind of collection I have. Uh, this one has the pens that are demonstrators, so there's holes cut in them so you can see how they work. What's this one? This is different kinds of filling systems. So, again, that generic pen that I drew on my desk could be in this drawer if it was one of those kinds of pens or in this drawer because it was at a weird filling system you know so just keep in mind that it could be anywhere these are more filling systems including some dummy pens i think no, they're in a different drawer these are pens that have gimmicks so again, I have to remember, okay, is that pen with the Parker pens or is it with the Parker gimmick pen or whatever that was? This is the one that tells you how many words you have left. This is one that has a perpetual calendar on it. This is one that has a magnifying glass on it so you can read the fine print. Uh, this, these are all, again, this is an example of why I like to collect things. It's fun to collect as many different versions of something as you can find. So these are all shape or balance pens. Now I could have had this, this drawer could be Parker dual fold pens, or it could be Parker 51s, or it could be Waterman eye drop fillers or whatever. But this particular example of my collection, when I'm showing this to people, these are all black shaper balance pens of various sizes, various types, various clip, designs for those people that like that. Okay, go in there. What is this for? This is, these are, these are pens that have, that show wear. And again, I like pens that have that, or sometimes even a part. Where's my camera? This, as you can see, is a very tasty, look at those teeth marks. It's almost bitten right through cap for a uh, Waterman ink view. This is what most collectors like, a perfectly good version of this, but I love the ones that show wear. Look at that plating wear and it's brown. So this, these are pens that have, that have had trauma to them, either teeth or burns or here's some, here's an example of someone that got out their wood cutting tool and made a pattern on their pen. Why they did that, I don't know. But I think it's kind of cool that someone went through the trouble of you know, putting their pen through the wood chipper. This one, this one's neat. It has all sorts of names written on it. And this was used by... Uh, a pen store to make sure that they're to, as a test pen for their um, the pens they were engraving for some police department so you have um, police department you've got uh, sheriff office you have ph photographers you've got um, pistol expert you get ballistics the crime laboratory. I just love, this is just really funny. It cracks me up. Uh, here's a homemade repair. Let's just get out the wire and you know, this is how 
Roebling would have fixed his pen if he was alive. He'd go to the to his wire company and I need some of that number triple uh, two. Yes, sir. Yes, wash, Mr. Wash, Mr. Roebling. These are fifty ones, and they're imitators. Now I have way more fifty ones. We'll get to those in a minute, and they're imitators the hooded nibs of various companies. Here's 51 hooded uh, pens made by shitty companies. And the shitty pen companies must have just danced a jig when they when the 51 came out because they could just make the crappiest one with the tiniest nib. These are uh, sterling pens, generally very smooth sterling rather than pretty. You know, they're, they're less like this and more machined. They look like a piece of, you know, something that could have come off a locomotive um, to me. Uh, these are the fancy overlays. And I've got more than these, but these are, again, an example of, yeah, I do like pretty things too. These are pens that have names on them. Bert Bonar, Kelsinator Quota Buster, pen and pencil set. So these all have various kinds of names on them or engraving of some sort. Here's a guy that engraved it. West CW, USNR, LST, there's his LZT1050 that he carved that with his butter knife, jackknife on a rocky ocean. I love over uh, uh, hard rubber orange pens and ripple pens, wood grade pens. These are all water. I love Watermans. I used to, you know, be a Waterman whore. <clears throat> love knew that I'd love their nibs almost ninety nine point nine times out of a hundred. And so these are all various Watermans. Even though I don't really, I mean, I always buy a Waterman if I can. Uh, but here, this one shows the history of a pen company, from so early Parkers all the way to later Parkers. But the Parker jackknife filler is not down there because it's up here somewhere, somewhere even though it's probably the rarest Parker I own, is this one. And it, there it is, and, hard, and mottled rubber, no less. So that's <clears throat> up in the in the a different drawer rather than where it belongs. But though it could belong anywhere else, these are sets. Some sets. These are an example. I like pen and pencil sets. So this is the again. This is the introduction drawer. This has a little microcosm of my entire collection. These are mechanical pencils of various types. These are pencils with apps. So the pencil with a ruler, the pencil with a cigarette lighter, the pencil with a slide rule in silver and in gold. Here's a pencil um, that shows uh, a TV radio repairman what color tubes he's dealing with. This is one with a calendar on it, a perpetual calendar. So this is the introduction to my collection. Over here I have pencils. These are the multicolored pencils. I have phone dollar pencils. I have uh, it's a whole bunch of pens of a different manufacturer. Oh god, 20 minutes already. Sorry about this folks. This is a tambour roll top thing. This was fitted out to sell tickets for a train station or a theater or something. It had all sorts of little tiny cubby holes that were uh, not part of the original thing, but it was repurposed to 
whole different kinds of sizes of things. So I, uh, the original things weren't there. The drawers come from uh, a pen case, a display case, uh, four pens by the Parker Company, and they were double wide, double deep, and I had sawn them in half. I didn't have the actual showcase, so I, I felt I could do this. I sawed them in half and added these little uh, runners for them. Uh, and these are arranged by manufacturer. So we've got off-brands up here. We've got Parker and Schaefer and what is down here? Schaefer flat tops. We have Schaefer balance pens. We have more pens. We have Good Service Pen Company pens. Here we have other pens, foreign pens. Morrison's are in here. Um, Incograph are in here, these drawers. These are wherever. I do have one pen case, and it came from my friend Frank Dubiel's estate, which is back here somewhere. It's a wherever pen case, display case. These drawers contain their flat files again. These contain really off-brand pens, sort of no name. They don't have any don't even have a name on them in many cases. And these are arranged by color, usually glitzy la-di-da colors. And then over here on this side. These are pens that I may only have a few examples of. And these are pens, oops, that I need to put in the right drawer. This is a, so, Kreutzer. Do I have a Kreutzer? K drawer might be down here. So I'm, I'm not, I can't do this with one hand, but these are arranged by color. These are John Holland, H. Do I have a drawer on top? Okay. So these are the A's to C's. This is Century. Um, you know, that's so the ones that I have only one, two, or three of I have here. I know I have a lot of Webster. That should be in this drawer somewhere. Anyway, I've got pens to put in that drawer. Speaking about pens to put, over here, this is another case that held watch bands. This has the original dividers in them, which I will probably take out. These are pens that have not yet been sorted. Uh, I recently got this case back from uh, the person I sold it to and uh, he used it for pen shows for years and years and then he stopped doing pen shows so he gave this back to me i haven't exactly figured out what's going to go in there but right now they're sort of a holding spot for pens <sighs> here is a remind me to talk we'll put this right there next to the peanut butter my virus peanut butter supply um, this was a case that held coins. Um, a coin collector had them. So coins, as you know, are not very fat. So I can't put every kind of pen in here. I can put pens that are relatively thin. So 51 gray. 51 brown. Vacuumatics. I have to be careful when I shove them back in because if they overlap, I'm screwed. Uh, those are Schaefer pencils. Okay, the pencil thing. Oh, up way at the top here. These are Weather of Pearl um, dip pens, Victorian era dip pens. Magic pencils, between the pencils. That's there. OK. 
a mirror mirror on the wall. Open this up. These are some of the pen sets. I decided to, to this once held jewelry, I made little pockets out of fabric. And these are pens that are sets. And these are generally ones that have clips on this side. Well, I guess, no, I, th I think I'll end up putting ring top ones over there. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Okay, behind it in, on shelves are pens that are in boxes. And these are arranged usually by company. This is, I don't know what that is. I think I just got it. It's a, so anyway, there's the Schaefer snorkel box. And it's filled with Schaefer snorkel set. So the set could be in the box. It could be in the drawer. It could be in, in the pocket thing. If it, the pen and pencil set has a fun name on it, it might be with the fun names. If it's a sterling silver pen and pencil set, it might be in the sterling silver drawer. And if it has teeth marks on it, it might be in the, the other drawer. This box, this is nice because it holds one pen. This was a, a gift from a neighbor, a neighbor, from, oh shit, a friend of mine who, who uh, loves this tramp art, these cigar box tramp art things. And he made this for me to hold a pen. And I have in it my favorite uh, Parker 51. If I had one 51 to take with me on the one desert island, it would be this one because I love the... It's a relatively rare color and it has the name Olive on it. I just love the way it looks. So Olive goes in that box. It's the special box. Okay. Finally, we get to this thing. You thought that I, that was enough? These are full of pens and pen parts. And some of these are complete pens ready to be sacked and sold. Some are pens that I need to... Uh, apply. This need, these need pressure bars, for example. These need nibs. Um, I've got a drawer full of nibs here somewhere. Where is my, where are my nibs? There's some nibs. Up here I've got other parts. Down there I've got more parts. Most of these are parts. And I used to have like, I don't know, 10 times as many parts. I bought this pen at the pen show. I paid a lot of money for it and then dropped it and cracked the cap lip. I thought, well, I, I'll just open a drawer and I'll find another one. Well, I didn't have another one. I had a more modern one. So I have a mis mismatched pen right now because of the trauma that happened. In these drawers here, you can't quite see. These are full of uh, desk pens, uh, desk pen bases, and sometimes the pens. Oh, I've got a little drawers. What's in here? Nothing. I've got some of the drawers I have don't have anything in them because I I move things around a lot and condense and then uncondense. There's that sock. I've been looking for that sock. See, it's it's just, it's always an exciting time in my house because I can always find something that I thought I had lost. Oh, I forgot this. I've got another... Turn the light. That is a case full of desk pens of various colors. Sometimes I forget that I that, you know, I, I go around the house madden, maddeningly looking for a particular pen. And quite often I will forget that, oh yeah, that did have a name. 
that's where it is, or oh yeah, that's a wood grain pens, you know, and so that's in the display case over there, or that's in the drawer over here, or it needs a new sack, and I have to put a new sack in it so it's over there. So this pen could be anywhere. On that note, toodaloo.